What is it, Pop? Shh. Smoke, she's coming here. Hi. Hello, dear. Hello, Jenny. Oh, I want to tell you the PTA meeting's been postponed till Friday. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye. Well, dear, it's nice you're home. Now, listen, if you give me the house money, I'll get down to the market. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what are you sitting on? Nothing. Same as usual. You've got something there. Where? Oh, oh that. What is it? Uh... Well, it's nothing important. I'll tell you about it later. You go ahead shopping. Yeah, I will as soon as you give me the money. Uh, charge everything. All I got is big bills. Mr. Riley, have you got your pay envelope? Sure, I got my envelope. Only I'm a little short. You're short again? What is it this time? Every week you get paid $59 and we owe more and more each week. Now, please, Peg, don't get excited. That's business owing money. That's the life of trade. Paying cash is for suckers. Run along, Junior. Okay, Mom. No, stay here, Junior. I okay, said Mom. run along. All right, let's have it. Now, don't get excited, Peg. You see, I was passing AZ second half. I knew now. it! I knew it! <laughs> Hey, calm down. What have you done this time? What worthless piece of junk have you wasted our money on? I did not buy any junk. I bought something useful, something I need. What? I'll show it to you. What is it? A diver's helmet. A diver? What are you going to do, go deep sea diving? No, but... Uh... Well, Peg, you know I got a bad habit of falling asleep in the tub. Oh. Please, Peg, please, take it easy. It's a good buy. It hardly leaks. You know that? His right mind would buy a diver's helmet to wear in the bathtub. Well, Peg, I was only kidding. I, I didn't buy it to wear in the tub. I bought it for something sensible. Something sensible? What? For the bees. Bees? Don't yell, Peg. I got it to protect my face from the bees I ordered. <laughs> You ordered bees? I sent a money order to Pasadena. They're gonna ship me some bees. Now, Peg, you know every summer we have a yard full of flowers and they're just oozing with honey. What's that got to do with you buying bees? Well, you don't expect me to suck the honey out, do you? It's a fortune in this honey racket, Peg, and there's very little work attached to it, except the little that the bees do. Sometimes you upset me so I can scream. Hey, you're going to be a nervous wretch. And no wonder the things you do. Look here, Riley, once and for all, there's something we got to settle. Now, look, Peg, uh, you're a little excited. Let's talk about it after, when you're cooled off. Uh, how's about a, a kiss, Peg? I'm not in the mood. That's the spirit. Peg, you didn't hear me. I said, how's about a kiss? And I said, no. Did you understand me? <laughs> no! <laughs> Has Mrs. Riley acted up like that before? Oh, this isn't the first time she's carried on over nothing. You should have heard her rave two weeks ago when I brought home the skeleton. You, you bought a skeleton? Oh, uh, not a new one. Second hand. Oh. <laughs> bought it for my den. Oh. Gonna build a den. Oh, that'll be real nice. And I can hang up the moose head I bought last year. I never saw a moose head in your house. Oh, I got it in cold storage. You see, uh, a moose comes from up north, and it likes the cold. That's very thoughtful of you. Show me a man who's kind to animals, and I'll show you a good man. Boy, did that skeleton I brought home steam up peg. <laughs> Mrs. Riley flies off the handle for no reason at all. Waldo, nothing I do satisfies her. She's always picking on me. Oh, dear. All the symptoms. What do you mean, symptoms? Well, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not say. Waldo, what symptoms? Well, I... Hiya, Riley! Hiya, Mr. Vinny. The front door was open, so I dropped in to look for my pal Riley. Because when I tried his front door, he wasn't home. And uh, nice to see you, Mr. Gillis. Uh, will you have a cookie? Yeah, as soon as I finish eating. My was out. You were saying, Waldo, what symptoms? What symptoms? A nervous breakdown. A nervous breakdown? But why? I've been reading Dr. Moody's book, Pay Attention to Nervous Tension. Dr. Moody says that many times the cares and worries of marriage prove too much for a woman. Do you think that's what's given Peg the nervous breakdown? Oh, it's quite possible. And this book says that any little thing can bring it on. Now, you must stop it while there's still time. Yeah, sure, but how? The husband <laughs> must try to recapture the spirit of courtship. He's right, Riley. You've got to start being romantic. 
Romantic, huh? I could be romantic. But Peg would kill me if she ever caught me at it. <laughs> oh, you must be romantic with Mrs. Riley. That's what I'll do, fellas. I'll go home right now and turn on the romance. I'll take her in my arms and I'll hug her and I'll kiss her. I'll treat her just as if she wasn't my wife. <laughs> Peggy, oh Peggy, where are you? Where are you, Peggy? Peggy. Here I am. Where have you been all afternoon? My darling, my darling. What? Come into my arms. Let me hold you close. But where are you joking? <laughs> kiss me. Darling, let me go. No. I'll never let you go. Come into my arms and kiss me. Kiss me quick, kiss, will you? I'm tired. I've been scrubbing pot. I know. And I want to take you away from all this. What are you talking about? Sweetheart, there's been something I've wanted to tell you for a long time. I love you. Riley, the children. Yes, we'll have two. A boy and a girl. You'll have to. We got two right now. What's gotten into you? You going out of your mind? Don't excite your little head, Dumplin'. I just wanted to hold you in my arms. Close to my own sweet little precious life pocket. Listen, I haven't got time for this silly nonsense. I've got a pot to scrub. <laughs> Fellas, she's more nervous than ever. Don't worry, pal. We ain't quitting. For 17 years, she's been a good mother and a wonderful wife. Whenever anything went wrong, she was always standing alongside of me, smiling and trying to buck me up. She's a fine woman, your wife. A gem. That's right. I didn't appreciate it, that's all. Now, don't start getting a guilt complex. No, it's true. I was selfish. Always doing things for myself. Never caring about her. While she was being a wonderful wife, I was behaving like a husband. How low can a man sink? Yes, so many married men behave like husbands. But I'm reforming. Do you hear me? I'm reforming. If my poor Peg pulls through this, I'll never give her another worry in this world. I take a note. You're right, pal. And we're with you. We got to help your poor wife to be happy, like she was before she knew you. In this book, Dr. Moody says, it keeps the patient cheerful, make her laugh. Is she ticklish, Riley? <laughs> and above all, keep unpleasant news away from her. See to it that you don't listen to any of that scary stuff on the radio. Take the tubes out of the set. Fine. And there's always a lot of depressing news in the papers. Yeah. Get the newspapers first and cut out all the grim stuff. Fine. That's what I'll do. I'll go home right now and start in. Although you keep reading that book, I might need more advice. Wife hits husband with bricks. Marriage on the rocks. <laughs> Judge Grant's wife divorced. Riley, where are you? Uh, I'm uh, in the living room, Peg. Trying to get the murder time hour on the radio, but the set's gone dead. Dad, that program will kill anything. Take a look at it. I can't. I'm laying down. I'm just standing up. <laughs> I, would, I was just going to lay down. Good heavens, what was that? I didn't hear Anything. You didn't hear it, Riley, I tell you. <laughs> Gee, those California crickets. Crickets? Mother, what was that noise? Sounded like somebody shooting yeah, something. It was nothing. Forget it, children. Listen, that sounded to me like it came from... Let me look in no, your pocket. No, hey. <laughs> what is this? Hey, that's a radio tube. A radio tube? So that's why it won't work. Daddy, what are you doing with the radio tubes in your pocket? Well, where else are you going to put radio tubes? I mean, well, those new pocket radios are coming out, Peg, and I wanted to get used to them. <laughs> uh, what's all this newspaper here? Oh. And the scissors. Have you been cutting some out of the newspaper? Is this something you don't want me to see? Oh, no, 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 Peg. Well, what were you doing then, Pop? Cutting out paper dolls? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. Cutting out paper dolls. That's <laughs> a lot of fun, too. <laughs> paper dolls? Daddy, why? Why? Well, this is a democracy, ain't it? And the Constitution says that every citizen has a right to cut out paper dolls if he wants. <laughs> you poor darling. Why don't you go inside and lie down and rest? Please. All right, Peg. Just don't you excite your pretty little head. I'll go in. I'm <laughs> <Dumpling. laughs> Mother, Daddy's acting very strangely. I know. 
Children, you know your father's been working pretty hard lately. Oh, yes, I know. I guess holding a rivet gun eight hours a day does something to you. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Mom? You may as well know it now or later. Your poor father's having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Hiya, Dumplin. Well, I just washed the dishes and put them all away. Now I'm going out in the yard and take the wash down off the line and do a little ironing. And then I'll wash up the floors. Sweetheart, why don't you go out and buy several hats? <laughs> the poor thing's raving. Oh, I almost forgot. The doctor gave me this tonic for him. It'll soothe his nerves. Oh, but Daddy won't take medicine. You know him. Well, I'll put it in his food. He won't even know he's taken it. I wish I knew if my little darling was getting any better. Waldo Binney says that Dr. Moody says that it's a good idea to observe the patient without them knowing it. Hey, that is a good idea. Peg's in the kitchen now making supper. Let's take a peek at her. I see her. She's pouring tomato juice in a cup. Yeah, that's for me. I like it that way. <laughs> Drink your tomato juice. I don't want any. But dear, I seasoned it just the way you like it. I think it's a little too highly seasoned for my taste. <laughs> but Daddy, you didn't even taste it. I don't want any. Go on, dear. Take a sip just to satisfy me. A sip would satisfy you? <laughs> I don't want any. I don't want anything. But dear, you've got to eat. Here, how about a bowl of nice hot soup? Soup? It's got a funny color. What's in it? Oh, potatoes and parsnips. Other things. I don't want it. I don't want anything. But, Daddy, you like potatoes and parsnips. Yeah, but I don't like the other things. <laughs> Riley, dear, something's bothering you. Tell me, what is it? What makes you so unhappy? Unhappy? Me? <laughs> I'm not unhappy. Why should I be unhappy? I got a nice wife, two lovely children. I got a good job, and I'm healthy. I got a long and happy life ahead of me, as long as I don't eat. <laughs> What'll I do, Gillis? Just watch yourself. Don't eat anything. Eating's a habit I can't break myself of. I'm starving. I haven't had any supper. Maybe there's something in the icebox that would be safe to eat. Hey, let's look. Hey! That's your custard. Take makes this for the kids. That ought to be okay. Sure. I'm starving. I could eat anything. Give me a spoon. Here's a spoon. I'm <laughs> table manager. Oh, Riley, here you are. What are you two doing in the kitchen? Oh, you ate the custard. You don't mind, do you, Dumplin'? Mind? Why, well, I was hoping you would. I made it especially for you. Especially for me? Yes, now you eat all you want. Why don't you have some, too, Mr. Gillis? I'll see you in the living room later. What's she got against me? She made it especially for me. Me, her only husband. I've been poisoned. We've got to do something, Gillis. We've got to do something. Don't get panicky, Riley. We can't be sure there's anything wrong with the custard. All right, then you taste some. What? Yes, what? 
Wait, we'll just have to wait and see. This is no time for experiments. We gotta do something. I'm poisoned. I'll get a doctor. No, don't get a doctor. He'll have to tell the police about the poison and then they'll arrest Peg. You gotta think of something else. Yeah. I know. Uh, you gotta get some of that stuff you take after you've been poisoned, like uh, uh, an antidote. Yeah, yeah, that's it. What do I take? Well, there's uh, raw eggs yeah. and, and vinegar. Vinegar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got the eggs. Yeah. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Get the watch it. I got the eggs. <laughs> Oh, a bowl, a bowl, bowl. bowl. Yeah, bowl. Yeah, that's it. Now we put the eggs in. Yeah, Pardon get another me. egg. There's the mustard. Put a little vinegar in. I now we mix it up. What do we do now? What do we do now? Now we drink it. Drink it. That's it. Wait a minute. I knew there was a catch to it. I can't drink this. It smells awful. But your life depends on it, pal. You're my best friend. All right, I'll take it with the custard. No, no, not that. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, I'll drink it straight. Go ahead. and let me look at you. <laughs> what a wonderful family I had. Mm. What hurt you? My stomach pain. Something I ate. But you didn't eat anything. I ate something. <laughs> but don't worry, Dumplin'. Don't be as scared. The police will never force me to testify against you whether I live or not. Mm. Oh, dear. Children, come here a minute. What is it, Mother? Poor father. I think he's out of his mind. Get Dr. Leroy right away. I'll phone. No, don't phone. He'll hear you. Run over to his house. Okay, I'll go with you. Let's go. What are you whispering about, Peg? Nothing, dear. You just relax. I'll get you some more custard. No, no. I've had enough of that custard. <laughs> Who's that? It's just the door now. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, hello. Hello. Who is it, Peg? Oh, it's Mr. O'Dell, the undertaker. Charlie. I don't think you better see him. He's not so well. Well, then perhaps I can cheer him up. I have some reserved seat tickets for tomorrow's football game. I can't use them. Well, I... Oh, I don't know. I guess so. Come on in. Might cheer him up. Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Lying there. <laughs> I don't feel much like talking, Diggins. Well, that's quite all right. I've come to give you a lift. I've got something for you. For me? What? It's a surprise. A box. That ain't no surprise. <laughs> Wait till you see the view from this box. It's out of this world. I know, I know. Oh, Riley, I envy you. I wish I could go with you. <laughs> you were going instead of me. Now, you mustn't be late. The kickoff is at 1.30. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a wonderful football game. Football game? Well, naturally. I thought I made it clear these tickets are for a football game. Oh, good heavens, right. You didn't think I meant baseball. <laughs> Don't make much difference, Trigger. I got something to tell you. I've been poisoned. Oh, no. Perish the thought. I found the stuff in this bottle. Let me have it. Digger. Why, Riley, you foolish man. This isn't poison. It ain't? No, it's a harmless nerve tonic. I've taken it myself countless times. Nerve tonic? It ain't poison. And I have no stomach ache. Gee, what a relief. Gosh, Digger, you made me a new man. When you first walked in here, I was a dead one. In the future. Let me be the judge of that. <laughs> well, here you. I'd better be shoveling off. Mother, he's here. What? Uh, don't be upset, dear. It's the doctor. Good evening, Mr. Riley. Dr. Leroy. But I didn't send for no doctor. No, dear, I did. Children, you better wait in the other room. All okay, right, Mom. Mother. You did? Because you were worried about a nervous breakdown? Yes, dear, but there's nothing to worry about. Doctor, I first noticed it. It's all right, I know. Your wife has told me all about it. And you 
willing to face it? My brave darling. Doc, do you think it's serious? Well, I think we've caught it in time. Doctor, I'm not a rich man, but I want you to spare no expense. If you need nurses or specialists, I want them. Now, don't worry. A month of peace and quiet in a rest home. In a rest home? But doctor... Now, please, Peg, the doctor knows best. What he says goes. Ah, oh, you're a brave darling. But I'll miss you, Dumplin'. Oh, I'll miss you, too. And I'll visit you every day. Dumplin', you got a little mixed up. I'll visit you every day. Oh, no, that's impossible, Mr. Riley. You won't be allowed to leave the rest home. Well, I understand rules. <laughs> Wait a minute. Me in a rest home? You're making a big mistake. Oh, no, no, Mr. Riley, we know what's best for you. But I'm perfectly okay. You just think you're okay, dear. A little while ago, you were acting so strange. <laughs> oh, well, that was because you poisoned me. I was? <laughs> I mean that I thought that you poisoned me with the stuff. Oh, that? But that's a nerve tonic I got for you. Of course. Well, what did you get it from me for? There's nothing wrong with my nerves. <laughs> well, what about the radio tubes? Oh, that, well... That was because I was afraid of you having a nervous breakdown. I took the tubes out so you wouldn't hear any of that gruesome stuff on the radio. And oh. then and then I cut all that stuff out of the paper. Oh, oh I see. Each of you thought that the other... <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. 